Bibles, turn with me to Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5, verse 12 is where we're going to start. But I need you also to go in your Bible to page 2. That's Genesis chapter 2. At least that's what it is in my Bible. I don't know what it is in yours. So unless you have a bunch of like uh, family trees and wedding stuff in the front, then it should be about page 2. Right around there. All right? Are we there? Romans 5, 12. Genesis chapter 2. I want to welcome everybody that's watching online. Thank you for watching. And uh, you need to show up in church here. We're here. And it's, it's good to be in person. So uh, thank you all for watching. If you're sick, stay home. But uh, <laughs> otherwise, be here. All right. Romans 5. Uh, I'll tell you what. Uh, before we do this, uh, I, I, like the pastor was saying, I have a wife named Jennifer. My son's name is Jake. He's 16. Just got his license and stuff. And so our insurance just went through the roof. And because it's a boy and he's 16. So uh, y'all pray for us that nobody gets killed. Okay. And are y'all awake this morning? Just don't know. I mean, you know, the our first service, there was a lot. I, I appreciate this right in here. There's some smiling going on here. I don't know about anywhere else. So y'all need to like get with the program here. All right, let's uh, all stand in honor reading of God's word. Romans chapter 5, verse 12. Romans 5, verse 12. The Bible says this. Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man and death through sin, and this way death came to all people because all sin. Let's pray. Father, we ask that you bless and anoint your word. We thank you for what you're going to do and the lives are going to be changed. Father, just soften hearts and draw them to yourself right now. We give you glory and praise for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. I, I, I like baseball. Uh, I played college baseball uh, for a year before I started in ministry doing a lot of stuff. So uh, I like baseball. We just finished the World Series. And uh, so what I'm going to do is to get y'all thinking and get y'all sharp, because I don't know if y'all just hadn't had enough coffee yet or what the deal is, but we got to get y'all paying attention and awake, okay? So if you can get this answer, this trivia question, uh, pastor's going to give you free lunch. Just want you to know. So uh, it's on him. So, But now here at students, you can't be cheating. Can't be looking at your phone, Googling the answer to the question. If I catch you looking down, you're disqualified. All right, no, you're disqualified, but I didn't even ask the question yet. All right, you ready? So if you can get this, lunch on pastor. Here it is. Does anybody know who was in the World Series in 1924? 1924. And you people online, y'all can't even, because y'all are already online, so I know y'all are cheating already. So, um, <clears throat> anybody, 1924. And, and you got to be able to say it out loud. White Sox, no. Who said Yankees? Okay, it was not the Yankees, but one was a New York team. Anybody? Well, not the Mets. Somebody said something down here. Dodgers, no, ma'am. Red Sox, no, that's a good guess. Not the Braves. Who said that? You were in the first service, though. Are you sure? We, you were singing on stage. He can't count. Can't, no. Pastor says you're disqualified. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'll tell you what. One of them was the New York Giants. Okay. The other one was the old Washington Senators. Okay, if y'all follow baseball trivia, you like, old Washington Senators were based in Washington, D.C. They split off, became the new Washington Senators, moved to Minnesota. Old Washington Senators dissolved. New Washington Senators end up moving down to present-day Arlington, Texas, where you have our present-day Texas Rangers. So technically, you could say we won a World Series because that's about the only way it's going to happen. So you had the old, oh, we can't beat Houston now. We couldn't beat the Yankees before, now it's Houston. So here it is. Oh, incredible series. I was reading this in a book about the, what happened in the last inning. It was unbelievable. You got the, the old Washington Senators playing New York Giants. The score is tied two to two. Series is tied up three each. You go the final, bottom, I mean the bottom of the eighth inning, the fans know all they have to do is hold the Giants three up, three down, top of the ninth. They come up bottom ninth, score a run, they win a World Series. Top of the ninth, they did just that. They got them three up, three down. Fans are going nuts. They're on their feet. They're cheering. They're yelling. They're chanting. They're going scr screaming, going crazy. First batter up for the centers in the bottom of the ninth inning. 
he gets out. Second batter, up for the centers. He gets out. Third batter for the centers. If you could pick anybody on your team that you want at the plate at this time, it was this guy. His name was Goose Goslin. And Goose was MVP of the series. He'd already hit, I think, four or five home runs, I believe, up to this point. Goose steps up the plate. Pitcher throws the first ball right down the pipe. Strike one. Next pitch, another meat pitch. Strike two. He has an 0-2 count. Next two pitcher balls. He gets a 2-2 count. Two outs. Bottom of the ninth. Score tied 2-2. Two to two. Series tied up three each. Do you understand there is only one more pitch that can get you any more bottom of the ninth. I mean, this is it. Next pitch comes down the plate. Goose steps into it. Hits the ball. I'm not talking a blooper. I am talking a shot to the left center. If he's on ESPN today, and National says, bah, 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 everybody's on their feet. They know it's going to be another home run by Goose Goslin. Goose rounds first, head to second. The ball comes down, hits six inches from the top of the left center field fence. It ricochets back into outfield. Center fielder, left fielder, chasing the ball down now. Goose rounds second, head to third. R the third base co coach realizes this might be the only chance they to score. So he weighs him home as he's bringing Goose home. Center field takes the ball, throws him shortstop. Shortstop relays the catcher. Catcher is standing over home plate. Goose is now sliding. He has clearly beat the throw by at least two steps. As he's sliding, catcher catches it, tags him. Umpire says, you're out. And when he did, fans went nuts. They started throwing all kinds of trash and debris on the field, cussing the umpires out, threatening to kill them, like a lot of your little league games around here. And uh, y'all know how it goes. Don't be acting like that. Y'all know how it goes. I want them things. I know what I'm talking about. So everybody uh, was watching what's going on. All the umpires went to pitcher's mound for a conference, probably because it was the safest place on the field at that time. And so everybody knew what was going to happen. I mean, everybody saw he beat the throw by two steps. So they know what's going to happen. They're going to get to the pitcher's mound. Oh, the umpire's going to say, hey, dude, what are you thinking? He dude was safe. He said, oh, I had dirt in my eye. I didn't know. And then they're going to call him safe. He's going to score. They're going to win the World Series. That's what everybody's thinking. Fifteen minutes goes by. Head umpire comes out. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? May I have your attention, please? The runner is still out, but not because the play at the plate. The runner's out because he missed first base. And just like Goose was called out that day because he missed first base, there's a lot of people in this auditorium, a lot of people watching online. When it's all done and said and you stand before a holy God on judgment day, you're going to be called out and sent to hell. Not because you weren't religious, not because you didn't go to church, not because you were a good person, but because you missed first base spiritually. See, how can we miss first base spiritually? A lot of people do it. I'm talking about millions and people do it all the time. So then how can we, how can we hit first base spiritually? Romans chapter 5 verse 12 shows us how you and I can hit first base spiritually to make sure that when we die, we're going to go to heaven. Romans 5, verse 12, the Bible says this. Therefore, we just got through reading it. Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man, and death through sin, and then this way death came to all people because all sin. He said, Ryan, what, what's that mean? Death came through one man, all sin because well, I, I don't understand that. All right, hold your place in Romans 5. Go all the way back now to Genesis chapter 2, verse 15. Genesis chapter 2, verse 15. Bible says this. The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. And the Lord God commanded the man, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat of it, you will surely die. All right, let me ask you a question real quick. Does everybody understand the playing rules that God had for Adam and Eve in the garden? Y'all got it? I mean, it's real simple, right? God told Adam and Eve, hey, Adam and Eve, you can eat from any tree in the garden, but you cannot eat from tree of knowledge of good and evil. You eat of this tree, you will die. He didn't say you're going to get sick. He didn't say you might get COVID. He didn't say you get anything. He said, no, you will die. Not you might die, you will die. Everybody got that? Pretty simple, right? Pretty clear. All right, let's pick up the story. Let's see what happens. Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. Here's what happened. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, did God really say you must not eat from any tree of the garden? 
The woman said to the serpent, oh no, we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say you must not eat fruit from the trees in the middle of the garden and you must not touch it or you'll die. Verse four, you will not surely die, the serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you'll be like God knowing good and evil. All right, stop there for a second. Let me ask you a question. Is there anybody here, anybody, that is never, ever physically going to die? You're never going to die. Now, take the second coming of Jesus out of the picture. Take him coming and getting us and taking us home, the rapture. Anybody here, ne you're never going to die. You're never going to get COVID and die. You're never going to get cancer. You're never going to get uh, in a car wreck. Uh, you will never have another birthday because the more birthdays we have, the older we get, the more organs wear out, shut down. Anybody in here never, ever physically going to die? Church, are we going to die? Church, are we going to die? Are we going to die? So what does that make Satan? A liar. Matter of fact, that joker, Jesus said, he's the liar from the get-go. He's the father of all lies, is what Jesus said. That, that joker's been lying from the very beginning. Do you know what he's going to do to you? He's going to lie to you. You know what Satan's going to say to you? He's going to say, hey, you, you don't need to hit first base spiritually. You're, you're a good person. You ain't killed nobody. You're good. You do a lot of good deeds. You're, you're good. You're all right. Don't let him lie to you and deceive you like he did Adam and Eve in the garden. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. In just a minute, I'm going to give you an opportunity for you to hit first base spiritually. For you to invite Christ to come to your life, to be your boss, your Lord, your Savior. And I'm going to give you an opportunity to come forward and do that. You know what Satan's going to do? He's going to lie to you just like he did Adam and Eve in the garden. He's going to say, uh, you don't need to be going down forward and doing that. People are going to look at you. They're going to laugh at you. They're going to talk about you. Hey, Ron, you've been going here for a long time. You, you've been a member of this church. People, what are people going to say? Or you just showed up for the first time and people are going to think, what are they going to say? He's a liar. Don't let him lie to you and deceive you like he did Adam and Eve in the garden. Listen, I've been doing this a long time. I've never seen anybody come forward and go, man, I wish I wouldn't have done that. Ne never seen that. You, you know what I've seen? Here's what I've seen. I've seen peace and joy, tears of joy. You said, but people are going to be talking about me and stuff. Hey, that won't happen either. Because you know what I've seen? I've seen other people going, do I, do I, need, I need to do this. I, I, I've never hit first place spiritually. So they're not going to be even focusing on you. They're going to be thinking about themselves. And then if, the, if there's anybody that happens to see you up there, then they're going to say, there's going to be some people who are going to be, man, I've been praying for that person for a long time. I've, I've seen tears of joy. So don't let Satan lie to you. So let's pick up the story. Verse 6. When the woman saw the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were open, and they realized they were, and we're from Texas, so we say it like this, naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made covers for themselves. What happened? God said, Adam and Eve, you can eat from any tree in the garden, but if you eat from this one, you'll die. Satan said, you won't die. Eve says it looks good. She took some. She ate it. Gave some to Adam. He ate it. They realized they don't have any clothes on. They went and hid in the garden. Are y'all with me to this point? Okay. Hold your place in Genesis. Go all the way back now to Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5 verse 12. Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man. Who's the one man? Adam. It says, and death through sin. And this way death came to all people because all sin. Folks, here's what the word of God is saying. From that one action in the garden. Where Adam and Eve disobeyed God. From that one action, sin entered into the world. But not only did sin enter the world, death also entered the world as a result of their sin. You're saying, Ronnie, you're sitting here telling me today? Because what Adam and Eve did in the garden? That that's why I've inherited sin? Yep. You say, because I've inherited sin because of what they did in the garden? That's why I'm going to physically going to die one day? Yep. You say, but Ronnie... That is not fair. That's just not fair. Ronnie, if that had been me that day in the garden, I wouldn't have eaten from the tree. Yes, you would have. You said, no, Mr. Ronnie, I wouldn't have. I stayed a long ways away from that tree because I'm a good girl. I'm a good boy. I, I love Jesus. Hallelujah. Pray the Lord. I, I'm a good. I go to church. Uh, no, let me tell you something. Y'all better get off your spiritual high horse right now because there was a bunch of sinning at your house before you even got to church this morning. So don't even act like there wasn't. Oh, no, 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 uh-uh. Yes, there was. Spe 
especially those of you got kids. Y'all, y'all know, what, don't act like, uh, hey, I got one. I know what I'm talking about. No, you tell me, did this happen or not at your house this morning? Especially those of you kids. You got kids there. You're getting the kids ready for church this morning, right, ladies? You got them in there, you got them at the table, and they're eating the little fruity pebbles. And you told them, it's the boy, it's the boy, it's always the boy. You told him, hey, you cannot get that prize out of that Fruity Pebbles until all the Fruity Pebbles are gone. So what's he do? As soon as you walk out of the room, he gets his grubby little paw down there, pulls that prize out, Fruity Pebbles go all over the place. So now you're having to get your little dust buster, and you're vacuuming it up and stuff going on like that. And so then your other little boy runs in your closet, gets a pair of your pantyhose, brand new pair of pantyhose, rip, puts on, rips your pantyhose. He's running around the house playing cops and robbers, shooting at people, just pow, pow. And you, then your little girl gets a brand new tube of lipstick, smears all over her face, and says, Mama, no, I look pretty. No, I look pretty, but look, Mama, I look like you. And then what's your husband doing in the middle of all this? Hey, can, can a man read the sports section of the newspaper just on the Lord's Day? Can, can I just have some peace and quiet? Watch a little sports center and just do, what, what, what are y'all fighting there? What's going on? All this commotion going on and stuff. So finally, ladies, you're in the bathroom, you're getting ready, and you're getting that little black stuff on your eyes, whatever that stuff, that little, little black stuff right there on your eyes, and you put it on. And what, what's your husband do? He comes in there and says, honey, we got to go. You know if we don't go now, we're going to be late. And you know if we're late, we're going to have to sit down front where the preacher sits all the time. We're going to sit down front. And what would you say, ladies? You said, I'll be ready in a minute. That's a lie. You just lied to your husband before you even got out the door because there is not a woman on this planet that can get ready in a minute. So you lied. You see him right there. There it is. All the men going, that's right. Preach it. Preach it. Spend half my life waiting on my wife. Amen. You want to drag me to church? You want me to hear all this? There it is right there. He's talking to you. But men, we sin too, don't we? Listen, I'm going to tell you something. When I'm in pulpit, I got, I got to tell the truth. I got to preach the truth, right? So tell me something. There, there's a lot of sins I deal with on a regular basis. Just because I'm a preacher don't mean I'm perfect. I sin just like everybody else. All right. Now, I'm going to tell you, one of the sins I deal with on a daily basis, I'm just going to be straight up with you. It is hard for me to get in my truck and drive from my house all the way to DFW Airport. Matter of fact, especially when I was in Haslett. When I was in ha living in Haslett and I had to get on this little highway called 114. Do y'all know what I'm talking about? Can I get an amen on that? So on one four, six lane highway, six lanes. There is one part like in Haslett where it kicked to 170. You were on 170, but really it was like 114. One set, because it was six lane. And it was like a 55 mile an hour speed limit. 55. There's nothing out there to hit. There, there's, you, you, you run off the road, ain't no big deal. Clip a fence post, maybe hit a cow. That, that's about it. And, and they got the speed limit at 55. There is one part, it goes from 50, oh, 170, from 55 to 40, 40. Do, do y'all understand I could jump out of my truck and run backwards at 40 miles an hour? I, I'm, thinking, I'm, I'm thinking, why does it go from 55 to 40 miles an hour? I, I didn't understand that. Police officer told me that it was because, y'all get that in a minute. P police officer told me that uh, <laughs> because there's a hill, there's a hill there that, the people coming the other direction can't see us coming. So that's why they had to slow us down. I'm like, well, don't punish us. Give them a mirror. Shoot it down the hill so they can see us coming, you know? You know what I'm saying? And, and so, but I'm, I want you to know, my speeding ticket paid for that thing to be changed. So now there's a red light there, and the speed limit is back up to 55 miles an hour. I'm just here to bless your ministry. Whatever I can do, I, I'm, I'm, I'm here all day, here to help, help you however I can. But... But we, but we see it, right? So then on the church, on the way to church this morning, right? Men, we're driving. And so somebody in front of us is not even driving the speed limit. Oh, no, that's just a big pet peeve. I mean, you, I mean you're not even going to go the speed limit. You're going to go under the speed limit. So what do we do, men? We, and we pass them. And I'm talking about here in the church parking lot. We're driving like that. L li listen, if you're going to drive like that, don't put them Jesus fish on the back of your truck. Don't, don't, don't be doing that. Or, or like, you know, I'm, I'm, I do a lot of rodeos and stuff like that. So a lot of them guys, they wear the, they have the little cowboy kneeling at the cross, and got the reins and the, the horse and the, you know, the cross right there. Listen, I don't have none of that on my truck because I have not arrived yet. I'm not, I can't put that on that. I'm not going to drag the name of Jesus through the mud. You know what I'm saying? Listen, you want something on your truck? Put a 
bumper stickers on there that says, I'm a Jehovah Witness. Follow me to church. Do something like that. But if you're Jehovah Witness, I'm just messing with you. <laughs> but listen, that's, that's what it, all the kids are going, that's right. Preach to my parents. They're always preaching to me and stuff. So preach to them. Uh, students, uh, you sin too. Don't act like you don't sin. You go, oh, no, Mr. Ryan, I don't sin. Uh, no, you do. Yes, you do. Uh, uh, no, your mom and dad tell you clean your room. And you go, but it is clean. You got stuff growing there. The EPA don't even know what it is. Hey, listen, your brother or sister that's been missing for four days, don't put their picture on a milk carton. Clean your room. Learn your bed. That's, that's where they've been for four days. Look, you'll see all the little, you know, wrappers and stuff, little Twinkie packages. That's where they are. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. I don't care what you, you think. I got a little bit of sin. I don't care if you think it's a little sin or a big sin. The bottom line is everybody in this room, everybody watching online, we have all sinned. Every single one of us. And the consequence of our sin is eternity in hell forever and ever. That's what we deserve because we have sinned against a holy, righteous God. You think, well, then what? we don't have no hope. What, 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 why are you telling us this, man? This is depressing. No, I, I, I came today to tell you some good news. And here's the good news. Romans chapter 5, verse 17. The Bible says this. He goes on and says, For if by the trespass of the one man. Now, is that talking about somebody getting on somebody else's land? No, it means sin. So in other words, the trespass, the sin of the one man. We said the one man was who? Adam. It says death reigned through that one man. How much more will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and of the gift of righteousness reign in the life through the one man, Jesus Christ? Do, do you hear what he's saying? One man, Adam, brought us sin, death, and destruction. But one man, Jesus, brought us life, grace, righteousness, eternal life, peace, purpose, hope, meaning. One man brought us down, but one man, Jesus, brought us up. I don't know why that's so hard to understand. Why is it so hard to understand? It's through the blood of Jesus, our sins are forgiven. He did not say through church membership. He didn't say through being religious. He didn't say by being a good person, doing good deeds. No, it's through the blood of Jesus, our sins are forgiven. And it's always been that way. You say, well, wait, Mr. Ronnie. Got a bone to pick with you. You say it takes the blood of Jesus to get forgiven of sin? Yep. It's always taking blood. You say, but wait, Jesus just, he died on the cross like 2,000 years ago. That's right. You say, well, so, but you said we've inherited sin ever since Adam and Eve sinned the garden. That's right, we have. You say, okay, so then what about all those people from Adam and Eve all the way up to Jesus? I mean, if it takes blood to get forgiveness of sin, it should always take blood to get forgiveness of sin. Hey, guess what? It's always taking blood to get forgiveness of sin. Never any other way. See, well, then, well, I don't understand how, how that happened. All right, real quick. Do you remember what happened in the garden? Let's go back to Genesis one more time. Go all the way back to Genesis. Now, I'm gonna catch you up on the speed where we're at, and then I'm gonna read one verse to you, okay? All right, here it is. Do you remember where God sold Adam and Eve in the garden? You can eat from any tree in the garden. Hang on, take that scripture down real quick. Don't put it up until just a second. So, Told Adam and Eve in the garden, okay, you can eat from any tree, you eat from this one, you're going to die. Satan said, you won't die. She goes, well, it does look good. She took some, she ate it. Gave some to Adam, he ate it. They realized they had any clothes on, they went and hid in the garden. God comes walking by in the cool of the day in Genesis chapter 3. Adam, Eve, where are you? Psst. We're over here. Over where? Psst. Behind these bushes. What, what, what are you doing behind the bushes? Duh, we don't have any clothes on. Who told you I don't have any clothes on? You ate from the tree, didn't you? Come here. So he calls them out. Now they've been making clothes back there out of fig leaves. Why fig leaves? I have no idea. Do, do we have anybody in here that's ever picked any figs before? I got any fig pickers. Fig pickers. I mean, got a couple, two, three, but one back here. Can I get a witness from fig pickers that fig leaves are itchy? Are they not? Tell me something. Why are they making clothes out of fig leaves? You want me to tell you something? That just goes, show one or two things about Adam and Eve. Either one, they had no common sense whatsoever. Or two, it was the first bush they come to. That's the only thing I can think of. 
So they come out with these fig leaf outfits. God, and they're like, mm, 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 mm. God's like, uh, uh, uh. Really, really? Out of everything I created? You gonna go, you gonna go fig leaves? Really? Really? So he said, all right, Adam, because you disobey me and you ate from the tree, I'm gonna have to pronounce a curse on you. So from now on, men from all over the world, from every tribe, nation, language, they're gonna have to work 40, 50, 60 hours a week to earn a paycheck to put food on the table because of what you did today here in the garden. What was Adam's response? <laughs> but God, what me? This is that woman you gave me? God said, I know. He said, all right, Eve, because you got Adam and Eve from the tree, I'm pronounce a curse on you. So from now on, uh, women from all over the world, from every tribe, nation, language, every time they go to have a baby, they're going to have to have an epidural because of what you did today here in the garden. What was Eve's response? But God, it wasn't me. It was that snake. He goes, I know. He says, all right, serpent, because you lied to them, deceived them, got them to eat from the tree, I'm pronounced a curse on you. So from now on, men from all over the world, from every tribe, nation, language, every time they see your skinny, nasty little head, they're going to get a shovel, a hoe, a shotgun, a machete, a club, stick, something. They're going to stomp on your little head. They're going to kill you, whether you're a good snake or a bad snake. It don't matter. You die from here on out. Unless you get lucky, you run into one of them jokers on Discovery Channel. They might think you're cute, play with you and all that. They might let you go, but everybody else is going to kill you. What does the snake say? Snake said, but God, what, me? It was, it was the dirt. <laughs> Not for real. But do you see what everybody's doing? What's everybody doing? Blaming somebody else for their own sin, right? Hey, church, has anything changed today? Pick up a newspaper. Judge, it's not my fault I shot and killed all those people. It's society's fault. Judge, it's not my fault I drowned my kids. It's my parents' fault. Judge, it's not my fault I did this. It is the government's fault. What's the word of God saying? It's not the government's fault. It's not society's fault. It's not your parents' fault. It is your fault. You have sinned against a holy, righteous God. So what did God do? Because Adam and Eve sinned in the garden. What did he do? Genesis chapter 3, verse 21. The Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife and clothed them. Now, if you're going to be here January 21st for the wild, men's wild game dinner, you probably caught that. If you're not going to be here for that, you might not catch that. Let me break it down for you. For the first time in the garden where the lion and lamb could play together, God had to take an innocent little lamb. He had to slit his throat. He had to hang him up from a tree, skin him out, and use the skin from that lamb to make clothes for Adam. Why did he have to do that? Because of sin. And because of sin, blood was shed. In the garden, it was one lamb for one man. But it didn't stop there. Do you remember the children of Israel in Egypt and they were slaves to Pharaoh? And they cried out to God, God save us, God rescue us. God heard the cry, sent Moses down to get the people out of Egypt. Pharaoh said, no, I'm not going to let them go. So God sent plague after plague after plague after plague. You remember the final last plague? God said, I'm fed up with them. He said, Moses, you, you tell Pharaoh that I'm going to come through tonight and I'm going to kill the firstborn male. Whether it's an animal or human being, firstborn male dies throughout Egypt tonight. But Moses, you tell my people, if they'll take a lamb, they'll slit its throat. They'll drain the blood into a bowl. They'll take a branch, they'll dip in that blood. They'll go to the front of their house. On the front of their door, they'll wipe the blood on the side of the door, over the top of the door, on the other side of the door. When I come through tonight and I get to their house and I see the what, church? The blood. I will pass over. That's where we get pass over from. I will pass over and spare their whole family. Do you see the progression? In, in the garden, it was one lamb for one man. In Egypt, one lamb spared a family, but it didn't stop there. Remember that God delivered the children of Israel out of Egypt? He delivered them out. They were out in the wilderness. God said, we're going to set up a portable church building. We're going to call it a tabernacle. There's going to be an outer court. That's where the altar is. That's where sacrifice is going to be made. There's an inner court place of worship. But Moses, there's going to be a place back here called the Holy of Holies. There's going to be huge curtains separating the Holy of Holies from everybody else. 
This is where the Ark of the Covenant is. This is where I'm going to show up. This is where I'm going to manifest my presence. Moses, nobody could come to my presence except your brother Aaron, the high priest. He can only come one day out of the whole year on the Day of Atonement. And when he comes back here, he has to wear special clothes, go through special ceremonial cleansings. But when he comes back into my presence, he has to bring with him blood from a lamb. And I want him to sprinkle it on the Ark of the Covenant, on the mercy seat, for the forgiveness of sin for the entire nation of Israel. Folks, do you see the progression? In the garden, it was one lamb for one man. In Egypt, one lamb spared a family. In the wilderness, one lamb got forgiveness of sin for an entire nation of Israel. But if it stopped there, you and I still would be without hope for two reasons. Number one, the majority of us in here, we're not Israelites. Number two, if you were an Israelite, according to the Torah, the law required a blood sacrifice. So when I pulled up in the church parking lot this morning, guess what? I ain't seen stock trailers. I ain't see y'all bring some bulls, y'all bring some lambs, some goats. What, what'd, y'all, what'd y'all bring to get forgiveness of sin? To sacrifice it. Have you ever done that? Nobody? So how are you gonna get forgiveness of sin? Because the law required a blood sacrifice. So you said, then, then Ryan, what do we do? What, I mean, how are we gonna get rid of our sin? Here it is. Go all the way back to Genesis. When Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, we've been separated from God. So God's whole plan was to bring us back to a right relationship with him. You know why? Because God doesn't want anybody to go to hell. God desires to have a relationship with everybody. So, so what happened was God sent prophet after prophet saying the Messiah was coming, a savior of the world. A matter of fact, in Isaiah, 700 years before Jesus came, he, he prophesied that he was going to be bruised for our transgressions. By his stripes, we would be healed. So finally, the last Old Testament prophet is preaching. John the Baptist. As John the Baptist is preaching and and telling people, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He's baptizing people. He looks up, John the Baptist, he sees Jesus coming. Do you know his exact words were in John 1, 29? He said, behold, the lamb of God that takes away the sin of the entire world. The world, church. Jesus was the final lamb sacrifice when he died on the cross. The final sacrifice for all mankind, for all eternity. Jesus was the final blood sacrifice. And it's always taken blood to get forgiveness of sin. Church, what's the song we sing? What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. It's always taking blood to get forgiveness of sin. And if your sins have never been covered by the blood of Jesus, I don't care who you are. You miss first base spiritually. And when you die, you're going to spend eternity in hell. But it don't have to be that way. God loved you so much. He sent his son Jesus to die on a cross for you. He died on the cross to pay for every single sin that you've ever committed. And he was buried in the grave. And three days later, he rose from the dead. And because of that... That's how you can have a relationship with him. And in just a minute, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you an opportunity to hit first base spiritually. You say, how? I'm going to give you an opportunity to pray a prayer. It's not a magical prayer. We're not blessing the food. We're not praying now, lay me down to sleep. Basically, you're doing this. You're saying, dear God, I know I'm a sinner. I know I've messed up. I want to ask you to forgive me my sins. God, I turn from my sins, and I invite you into my life to be my boss, my Lord, my best friend. If you've never done that before, If you've been banking on that you're going to go to heaven because you're a good person, because you've been to church, because you are a member of a church, you've been religious, you haven't killed nobody, you've been baptized. If you realize for the first time today that you've missed first base spiritually and you want to hit it today, you're willing to repent of your sins and believe in Jesus, I'm going to give you an opportunity to do that. You say, well, if I do that, what happens? Here's the other good news. You ready for this? Romans 5, 21 says, so that just as sin reigned in death, so also grace might reign through righteousness, to bring eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Do you know what that means? You can spend eternity in heaven forever. Because see, when you die, you're going you're gonna to live forever in one or two places. You're going to live forever in hell, or you're going to live forever in heaven. And you can live forever in heaven. You said, well, so you're telling me it's all just about going to heaven? No, it's not just about going to heaven. I'm talking about right here, right now, because there's some of you, you have no peace, you're miserable, no purpose in life. Jesus said in John 10, 10, I have come that you might have life and have it to the full. 
You want to experience life to the full? Because I can tell you right now, I can look around this room, I see a lot of people don't have life to the full. You can have it today, and you can invite Christ to come to your life. I'm going to give you an opportunity to do that in just a minute. There was a a 17-year-old girl that was raped by an 18-year-old guy. And according to a lot of uh, government officials in Washington, D.C., this girl should have an abortion because she was a result, because she, she, she was raped. Matter of fact, I've seen, I can't tell you how many people in church that think that. That think just because a lady, a girl was, you know, raped that she should have an abortion. Matter of fact, a lady tried to take her to an abortion clinic to get her to abort the baby. The 17-year-old girl said, no, I'm going to have this baby. Nine months later, she had a six and a half pound baby boy. And that baby boy is me. And I'm not here by accident. I'm not here by some fluke. I'm here for a purpose and a reason. And that purpose and reason is God loves me and cares about me and wants a relationship with me. My life verse now is Genesis 50 verse 20, which is what you intend to harm for me, God intended for the good, for the saving of many souls. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to give you hope and a future. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Do you understand? You're not here. It's not just me. You're not here by accident. And I'm not talking about in this church. I'm talking about you're not here on this planet by accident. You're alive and breathing right now because God desires a relationship with you. And you don't have that relationship. So the very reason that you're created, it doesn't exist. That's why you don't have any peace and purpose and meaning. But you can have it today, right here, right now. You say, how? If you're willing to repent of your sins and believe in Jesus. You say, I've never done that before. I'm going to give you an opportunity to do that. Because he loves you. He wants a relationship with you. That's why you're here. That's why you're created. That's your whole existence. And if you want to start a relationship with him, you can right here this morning. You say, how? I'm going to pray a prayer in just a minute. And right where you're seated, you can pray and invite Christ to come to your life. And he'll give you peace and purpose that you've never had before. Hey, listen, I'm not blowing smoke. This is Jesus. He changed my life. And he can do the same thing for you. And if you want to, I'm going to give you an opportunity. To do that. I don't care if you're watching online or you're in this service. You can invite Christ to come to your life right now. And I want you to do me a favor. I want you to just give me two minutes for nobody to get up, nobody to leave, not the band, not the deacons, ushers, Sunday school teach nobody for two minutes. This is the most important time of the entire service. If you've missed first base spiritually and you would like to hit it today, I'm going to pray that prayer and right where you're seated, you can invite Christ to come to your life. He'll change you forever. Can you do me a favor? Can we bow our heads and close our eyes, please? With heads bowed, eyes closed. You say, Ronnie, that's me. I've never done that. And I want to hit first base spiritually this morning. Then you pray this prayer with me right now. Just silently with me to God and you invite the creator of this universe into your life. Pray this prayer with me right now. Dear God, I know I'm a sinner. I know I've messed up. And I want to ask you to forgive me of my sins. And I turn from my sins. And I invite you into my life to be my boss, my Lord, my best friend. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. And thank you for saving me, Lord Jesus. Now with heads bowed and eyes closed, no one's looking around. I'm not going to come to you and embarrass you. I'm not going to call you out. I don't believe in that. I just want to pray for you. If you're here this morning and you say, Ronnie, for the first time in my life, I hit first base spiritually. If you just prayed that prayer with me and you just invited Jesus to come into your life, like I said, I'm not going to come to you and embarrass you, call you out. I just want to pray for you. you say, Ronnie, that's me. I just prayed that prayer. Would just those of you that prayed that prayer, would you just look up at me right now and let me catch your eyes? Okay, got you in the back. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Anybody else over here on this side? Say, Ronnie, I prayed that prayer. I invited Jesus to come alive. Yes, ma'am, right here. Over here on this side. Anybody else? Say, Ronnie, that's me. I just prayed that prayer. Okay. Would just those of you that pray that prayer, keep looking up just for a second. I just want to share something with you from the Word of God that's going to encourage you. I just want you to know, I don't care what you've done. I don't care how bad you think you've been. Jesus Christ died on the cross to cover all your sins and all my sins. They're forgiven. You are clean before God. 
And so not only that, he's come to live in you. You know the cool thing about that is? He says he'll never leave. The Bible says in Psalms, though your mother, father forsake you, he says, I never will. There are going to be people leave us, die on us, whatever, ban us. He said, I will never leave you. You say, okay, so what am I supposed to do now? Well, now you're a Christ follower. You know what that means? Uh, you're stuck with me now for eternity. We're family. We're friends. We're brothers, sisters in Christ from here on out. You say, okay, so what are we supposed to do now? Jesus, the one who died on the cross for you and for me to take away our sins. Do you know what Jesus said in Matthew 10, 32 and 33? He said, if you confess me before men, I'll confess you before my Father who's in heaven. He says, if you don't confess me before men, I will not confess you before my Father who's in heaven. You know what that means? That means it's imperative we take a stand and let other people know that we're followers of Christ now. You say, well, what do you mean? That means he's saying, if you're, not, if you're going to be ashamed of me on, on this earth, he said, I'm going to be ashamed of you in heaven. I don't know about you. I don't want Jesus to be ashamed of me in heaven. I want, when I get to the big pearly gates, I want him to say, hey, that's Ronnie. Come on in. So you say, what am I supposed to do? Here's your first opportunity now that you've invited Christ to come to your life. In just a second, we're going to stand with heads bowed and eyes closed all over this building. When we stand, I'm going to pray. When I say amen, all of you that prayed and invited Christ to come to your life, uh, pastor's going to be right here. Pastor, would you go ahead and come on up? He's going to be right there. I'll be standing right down here. You pray that prayer. You come to me. You come to the pastor. You say, what are we going to say? All you have to say to him is, hey, I, I hit first base spiritually, or hey, I prayed that prayer with Ronnie. You say, what are we going to do? We're going to introduce you to a person called an encourager. Encouragers, would y'all look up at me real quick? Encouragers. I need every single one. How many do I got? I need some more. I got two. I need some more. Encouragers. Okay. There's three. Uh, uh, four. Okay. Encouragers. When we stand in just a second, when we stand and I pray and I say, man, the band's going to sing. Matter of fact, uh, Tiff, would y'all go ahead and come on up?